Hello, hello, hello. This is Rich Kale here on YouTube, Rich Gen X Elsewhere. And it's time to return to uh, Spellcasting 201, the Sorcerer's Appliance. Now, we just got to see what's his name do his stunt. So, all right, so let's get up to the top of the tower, Alchemy Lab. Sprawling classroom is where generations of aspiring sorcerers have come to acquire the skill of alchemy. The ancient art of transmuting one substance into another. The lab is equipped with a panoply of mystifying equipment and is filled with rows of lab benches whose burned and pitted surface attest to the countless misdirected experiments. In other words, something standard for alchemy. Uh, a wide set of stairs returns to the ground floor and a smaller stair leads further up the tower. In your cubby, you see a shaker of red powder, a shaker of green powder, a bottle of orange fluid, a bottle of blue fluid, a pouch of brown flakes, a pouch of gray flakes, and a mixing bowl. And uh, I don't think we need those right now. All right. Well, let's go back up. Go up. And now we are in the clock tower. For hundreds of years, the Sorcerer University clock tower has been endur an enduring symbol of the school, the first sign of the campus that people see as they approach, and the last thing they can see as they travel away. Stooped amidst the complex me mechanisms that run the clock, you feel like a mite who has crawled into a wristwatch. A rickety stair leads down out of the clock tower, and a spindly ladder leads even further up. The clock mechanisms were advancing the mighty hands of the clock. And there is a frog, frog waka box that we will need to get. All right. Okay. So now, um, hmm. I'm going to have to double check this one. Hmm. All right. We have our early afternoon class we'll have to attend. Ugh. Let's see. Let's uh, wait. No, I'm going to do a save as chance. Because I don't know. Let's see. Okay, look at schedule, and what will it tell me? Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I didn't upload it to anything on my tablet on, on the fritz. Well, let's see.
get fog whacker. Good, we got the fog whacker box. Open fog whacker. All right, now that we got that, see what I do when I ha happens when I try and look at my schedule. <laughs> Spire. You are standing on the pyramidal roof of the clock tower. The view is as st stupendous as the perch is precarious. Below the ivy clad halls of campus spread out like a picture book. Beyond the blue finger of the river stretches west among the hills towards the congested towers and the smokestacks of Balmoral City looming above you. At the very peak of the roof standing at least 15 feet tall is the venerable statue of Marvin Melting Wolf, founder of SU. The only survivable exit is a flimsy ladder. Well, and that statue has been made unclimbable. Because there is a coat of very slippery stuff on it. The statue is no longer glistening. Oh. All right. So let's go up again. Up. With an agility that would make your physical skills instructor proud, you pull, shimmy, scramble, and claw your way up the statue until you find yourself clinging desperately to the neck of the statue, trying to ignore the vert vert vertiginous plunge on all sides. <laughs> well, let's put that mustache on the statue. You smack the mustache onto the upper lip of the statue, a bit lopsided, but it'll do. Graduation, if wearing a tiny cap and gown appears and clothes before you. Congratulations, you graduated to the rank of level 3 saucer. It's obviously inconvenient right now, but at first opportunity you should attend an address by some self-important windbag who's trying to be profound, but is merely spouting cliches. Okay, promise. Good. Also, once you have an office, you want to write away to Sorcerer Central HQ for a suitably framed certificate. Well, yay, we graduated. <laughs> All right. Climbing down, you lose your grip, and only a quick hook of your leg around the statue's arm prevents a fatal plunge. Your movement causes a piece of the statue to break loose, namely the sheet metal bender which Melting Wolf was shown holding. And the dislodged piece falls through the opening into the clock tower, landing with below, landing with a smash. You wind up hanging upside down by one leg, with the ground swinging disorienting. Disorienting. Disorientingly above you, with your heart racing like mad, and with your mouth gibbering hysterical little shrieks. Okay. You get off the statue. All right. Let's get back in the clock there. All righty. The sheet metal bender. So, okay. Hey, I'm 
I'm going to need that. So down to hmm. Let's see, so I got another class I'm going to have to attend. Ah, good. I see. So I got my... Okay. Alright, so let's see. Where's my next class? I don't know where my next class is. I know where my last class of the day is. Okay. Alright, so that's obviously... Alright, alright, I know, I know. Okay. Now I gotta remember what the class is. Hmm. I wonder if it's in my hint booklet. <laughs> ain't helping me. Okay. That don't help me. As I page through the book. Do, do, do. I don't understand how they come up with those, you know. Yeah, time constraints. Going to classes are very important. Okay, so where are my classes at? Okay. No, no. That don't help me. Oh, great. What's this? Damn. That's... Oh, damn! Well, in my hint booklet, I had, uh... Alright. So, where would the class be? It's on plants. I'm going to eat a pie. Okay. South? Yak bladder quad. Let's try west here. Donkey dung hall. Wait. Oh. Okay, I guess I guess uh, this is the right class. General Magic. All right. St. Warner Academy of Magic. Magic, okay. Likely transmitted a little, okay. Okay. 
Magical potions power. Ah, there we go. So we're getting our. Uh... Now we have the right class. Uh, I'm going to restore now so I can. Mainly because I want to make sure I'm, you know, get it from the beginning. Save. Okay. All right. Bell rings to the start of class, of early afternoon class. Lecture hall quickly filled with students, and you start taking notes. Take notes. Let's come to order. Please quiet down. This is a large class, so I'll have to ask you to keep the idle chatter to a minimum. This is General Magic 201. We'll be meeting on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays during the early afternoon class period. Is everyone in the right place? My name is Theodore Brandmuffin, and I've been here at Sorcerer U for, well, just about my whole life, it seems. I was an undergrad in theoretical spellcasting, class of 11. I did my graduate studies here in the general magic department. Then I left for two years to pursue my doctorate at St. Weinberg, St. Wienersburg Academy of Magic. My class, this is at the mention of SU's rival magical school, SWAM. Then I returned in 1017, joining the SU f faculty in the general magic department, and that's where I've been ever since. In addition to teaching this course, I have six graduate students working for me. We're attempting to isolate the microorganisms responsible for biologically transmitted levitation powers. Last year in General Magic 101, you recall that most of the term was spent studying members of the animal kingdom with special magical powers and learning how, as sorcerers, to harness those powers for our own purposes. Yeah, sounds normal. In 201, we're going to con concentrate on magical potions, powders, and ointments. Since virtually all of the basic ingredients of these items are derived from plants, we'll spend the first few weeks of the term studying the magically imbued flora of Peloria. There will be two texts for this course. A survey of magically empowered biota by Jasper Dill Pickles and theory and applications of magic substances by Kyle Tales in his Talks in His Sleep. You'll need biota right away, but you can wait a few weeks before you pick up substances. Well, that's nice. Let's get started by looking at what Dill Pickles classifies as the five basic magically imbued plant forms. Dill Pickles calls these the Figly Five, an acknowledgement of the work of Fernard, uh, Ferdinand Figly, 7, 79 to 865, who was the first to catalog several of the species and was the first to recognize their importance in the preparation of potions. First of the Figly Five is Spatula Moss so-called because of its fondness for growing on unwashed kitchen implements. Spatula moss is a moist, rock-bound species, characterized by its pungent aroma reminiscent of burnt pineapple. Spatula moss dries to a fine powder, which is the basis for all internally taking powders, which augments senses. Mixed with other elements, for example, it produces such standards as night vision potion and hearing augmentation powders. Oh, well, that's good to know. Lef left moist spatula moss forms the basis for all internally taken potions which augment physical skills. For instance, a simple mixture of spatula moss and squirrel vomit forms your basic speed enhancement potion. Blech! The second of the five fig leaf plants is damnation moss. This moist earthbound moss is easily recognized because of its streaks of red and the horn-shaped projections at the end of its tiny leaves. We have a microscope to check that. Damnation moss is primary 
the primary component of all magical healing salves, as well as a component in many internally taken medicines. Was that salve or salve? One caution, about 2% of all people are allergic to damnation moss and will react violently to the consumption of any potion containing it. Fun! Magical properties of damnation moss have been known since prehistoric times. Archaeologists have found traces of it among the remains of the huts of ancient medicine men, indicating that even these primitives knew of its restor restorative powers. Or its powers to make certain people sick. Thirdly, we come to simple berry shrub. This beautiful flowering evergreen shrub gets its name from a foolish old tale that eating its berries would turn a person into a simpleton. This persistent myth has been exhaustively proven to be untrue. The simple berry has no magical properties whatsoever. Maybe it's only certain people it does that to. Like politicians. Although the simple berry is not magical, the shrub itself most certainly is. Give a simple berry shrub a vigorous shake and you'll be surrounded by a cloud of quite potent pollen. Inhaled, the pollen gives reasonably effective stealth abilities. Oh, it's a favorite of assassins. When collected, this pollen can be mixed into a variety of enchanters and modifiers to produce the simple berry family of invisibility potions. A century and a half of research has yet to uncover a more effective and longer lasting group of invisibility potions. Hmm. The fourth of the fig leaf plants is the dwarf gecko pine, a narrow leaf evergreen which grows only in the foothills to the west of Port Gecko. To produce stasis potion, the other po potion of Im and other potions of immobility and preservation, the gecko pine is ground up, trunk, branches, leaves, cones, and all, and heated for an extended period in a sealed glass container, a process known as bosbardification. In addition to making stasis-type potions possible, the dwarf gecko pine produces a magical sap, which is the key ingredient in several important alchemical compounds. Oh, good. Finally, there is a broadleaf deciduous tree known as the Southern Red Dragonwood or more commonly as the lugnut tree. It is the lugnuts themselves which carry magical essences. However, they are difficult to come by since the tree only produces the nuts after the extended monsoon season, and the nuts usually remain on the tree for a day or less. Damn, that does make it difficult. Lugnuts are sun-dried, finely chopped and mixed in with various dead insects to create animal transformation powders. For example, lug nuts and lice are the basis for the standard human bird powders. I see the time is just about up for Wednesday. Please read the first two chapters in Dill Pickle's book. Okay! Stop taking notes. Stop. No! Bell ring signifying the end of... Okay, the lecture... And you stop taking notes. Well, good. And our next class is upstairs. It's the alchemy lab. I don't have a lot of time to get there. <laughs> it's like a half hour. That's why I wanted to make sure I was finding the right spot. All right. <sighs> All right. Get all but bowl and red powder. All right. I got it all. Okay, now I gotta open everything, huh? Open green powder. All 
All right. Open green. Now let me open all that. Orange bottle. Blue bottle. Let's see. Gray flakes, brown flakes. All right, let's get all this done. Okay, open green powder. Open orange bottle. Bong, bong, bong. Lab quickly fills with students and you start taking notes. Okay, open... Uh, Blue bottle. Okay, you would be alchemist. Let's not waste any more time. Let's start learning this stuff. This is a professor glances at his notes. Alchemy 302, Concepts of Transmutation. And I'm Professor Eden Mola. You know, I've heard of some people who have to check their notes all the time. Well, okay, just open it. Gray flakes, open brown flakes. Before we get into our first lesson, let me set down some ground rules. If you miss class, you're out. If you're late with an assignment, you're out. If you give me any guff, you're out. If I don't like your face, you're out. Is that clear? Yes, sir. Yup, gulp. Oh, this guy's a real piece of work. Well, why he has to keep checking his uh, notes? No, open brown flakes. Let me get that open. Flakes. Okay, Hidden Muller looks down at a thick syllabus and begins reading. Lesson 1, Introduction to Basic Alchemists, Alchemistic Supplies. Everyone should have a fully equipped cubby. Any problems? One student timidly says, Professor, my cubby is empty. Well, just borrow the stuff from someone else, you whiny little nerd. This guy's not on the level. Hidden Muller continues reading. The basic components of any transmutation are the essence weakening compounds. You'd have a stopper, bottle, or flask containing an orange fluid. This is essence weakening compound number one, also known as EWC-1. EC AWC one is a time tested combination of mass sweat, hell, hamster blood, and a sap from a dwarf gecko pine. Hmm. All righty. Okay, why didn't I get my bowl then if I need it? Oh well. Your other bottle of or flask has a blue fluid. This is essence essence weakening compound number two or EC, WC two. 
Oh, God, this is boring. He WC2 first formulated in 817 by Professor Garrett Sizzling Rice Soup here at Sorcerer U. Contains fig juice, the tears of a newborn baby, and elephant mating essence. Professor looks up at a student sitting nearby. How'd you like to drink that with your dinner, eh, gnarly bush? Resumes reading. EWC fluids are the first step in any transmutation by weakening the essence of what makes a substance that substance. It prepares it for the modifications to follow. Some basic transmutations require UCW1. Hidden Muller flips the pages of the syllabus. Some basic transmutations require UCW2. And some will use both fluids. More advanced transmutations require more complex EC EWC compounds. We will deal with them briefly later in the term and more fully in Alchemy 401. The bottles containing your EWC1 and EWC2, as well as the containers that hold your other alchemy supplies, are the latest in magic technology. They are designed to dispense exactly one unit of the substance each time you pour. In addition, the containers are auto-refilling, so you will never run out of any supply. In your cubby, you'll find a shaker of green powder. This powder is positive matter transmuting compound, or MTC+. MTC plus is composed of sunflower pollen, dehydrated jungle moss, and ground freeze dried puffer slug. And Moore looks up and raises his eyebrow as he fix his eyes fix on yours. Well, Eagle Beak, not exactly the stuff you'd like to find in your underpants, is it? I didn't realize I had a sophomore in this class. Don't think I'm going to go I'm going to go easy on you just because you're taking a junior level course. In fact, I'll probably go harder on you. It's five o'clock. Hmm. Let's see, where was I? You also have a shaker of red powder, which is negative matter transmuting compound or MTC minus. MTC- minus is a mixture of sea salt, dried banana seeds, and powdered Barftonian coral. It was first developed by the great mage Louis Setting Sun in 858. Matter transmuting compound is what actually drives the transmutation. With MTC plus pushing your substance into a higher order element and MTC- minus pulling it down to a lower substance. Now, look for a pouch of gray flakes. This bag contains transmutorial accelerator, also known, also called transaccelerator. These flakes are made from sycamore bark, grated scallop shell, and dandruff from a dying witch. Transcelerators speed up the duration of common transmutations, changes which could take hours or even days without these flakes occur in mere minutes. I wish I could get some flakes that would have the same effect on my laundry woman. As Hidden Muller chuckles, a small key slips from his pocket and falls to the floor, unnoticed. You take the small key. <laughs> Your other bag should be a pouch of brown flakes. These flakes are transmutation, transmutorial dampener, usually referred to as transstop. It is produced from chopped onion skin, pulverized dragon scales, and scrapings from the briefcase of a dead lawyer. Damn, that's powerful stuff. Transmutation causes the transmut transstop causes the transmutation to halt. 
before it can progress on to undesired additional changes. It removes all traces of EWC and MTC compounds and then quickly disperses as well. Hidden Muller turns the page. Congratulations, you are now ready to attempt your first simple transmutation. The instructor pass out the pieces of iron. Oh, I guess I'm not supposed to say that. I'm supposed to do that. Uh -huh. Hidden Muller passes around a box containing lumps of metal. You take your lumps. You're going to try the assignment, Eagle Beak, laughs Hidden Muller. Just try not to blow the roof off the building. Uh. Well, now. Okay, well, let's put iron in the bowl. You put the lump of iron in the mixing bowl. Your first lab assignment will be to turn this specimen of iron into copper. The most basic of transmutations first performed in 841 is known as the turtle shell transmutation after the pioneering alchemist Tyrone turtle shell. Get ready to copy down the formula. Okay. ETC. Is it ETC or ETW? Oh, it's EWC. Damn. C dash one on iron. And you seem to. S okay. Put your iron into your mixing bowl and pour in one unit of EC. EWC1, then two units of ETC, MTC+, plus, then add one unit of Transcelerator, wait ten minutes, finally add one unit of Transstop, you should now have a piece of copper in your mixing bowl. Hidmore looks up with a grin, but knowing what a bunch of incompetents you sorcerer wannabes are, more likely you'll have a bowl full of mess. If so, just lug it over to the cafeteria and they'll serve it up for lunch. All right. Okay, let's put that on. Kimmy, well, campers, drop into the lab here and try that transmutation sometime before Wednesday's class. Try not to burn the place down. At this point, I'm supposed to remind you that what my office hours are, but I hate getting pestered, so I won't bother. Class dismissed. Oh, he's a piece of work. <laughs> Bell rings, signifying the finish of the late afternoon class. The lab quickly empties, and you stop taking notes. Okay. All right. Put gray flakes in bowl. Chemical seems to seep into the pores of iron. Wait. Over a period of several seconds, the dull gray iron takes on a coppery sheen. Put brown flakes in bowl. Your chemical seems to seep into the pores of the copper. And we have just successfully transmutated the iron into copper. All right, get full. You take the mixing bowl from your cubby. Oh, did I do that all in my cubby? Okay. All right. Orange. 
orange bottle. Green powder, gray flakes. That green powder I said, green powder, gray flakes. Okay. Drop brown flakes, diamond. Drop brown flakes, diamond. Yeah. All right. Alrighty, so we've done everything for today. All right, so let's uh, drop. Oh, oh yeah, we went all over this. All right. Well, that sheet metal bender is actually one of the appliances we're going to need, the greater appliances. Okay. So now we're just waiting until it's, uh, someone takes the last newspaper. It's now nine o'clock. Notice that the sky doesn't change for day and night. Yeah, I don't need to see the other one. I trust it. Well, we just wait a little bit more. The air is suddenly filled with the whooping and squawking of your frat mates as the HDP upper class men appear and drag you back to the cellar of the flat frat house. Eric Moulton Rock, the fraternity press, is here wearing face paint, ceremonial robes, and a vacant expression. Ledge Master Chris Cowpatty is here wearing the treasured HDP chicken suit, Delta Fart. You see Gary, dirty junk pile, and Sid dances with sheep here. Pledge Master Cowperry peruses the line of pledges. Okay, let's see how you miserable maggots did today. Did pledge dirty junk pile contra horns nesting class. The assembled frat men begin dancing and waving their arms around as though possessed. Yes, Fox Pock, yes! Well done, pledge dirty junk pile. And did pledge dances with sheep. Lob a smoke bomb at the blue demons. As Cal Patty continues his bellicose ceremonial rantings, your attention wanders. <laughs> Suddenly, Cal Patty leering faces an inch away from your own. Did pledge Eagle Beak place the mustache upon the clock tower statue? Yes, Bok Bok, yes! Cal Patty's face falls. What? He smiles, grinds his teeth, and says, Pledges. You have miraculously survived the day's obstacles, but tomorrow will be harder still. Sleep hardy, boys. After a few final flaps and squawks, the, the cellar empties. Oh, somebody didn't. Somebody was expecting me to fail. All right, so let's go up. Who dealt a fart? Near staring vapidly into Cal Patty, Pled is sprawled on the couch. A pledge calls the Cal Patty, Patty, saying, 
pledge in a tone that implies he really means, Hey, worthless pile of maggot running tree mold, better get a good night's sleep. You've got a date with the hazing com or the initiation assignment committee bright and early tomorrow morning. Yeah. As you leave the living room of the frat, you hear Cal Patty growl, Eric, my room now. I've got something on my mind. All right. Well, let's find out what their scheme is for next for the next day. So let's listen to the doc. God damn it, Eric. How did that worthless turd get that mustache onto the statue? You were there. You helped me put the lubricant on the statue. Well, we'll just have to get him tomorrow instead. Let's see. That's it. The Tapakega Brew mascot. We'll ask that run to him to kidnap the Tapakega Brew mascot. The poor schmuck will be trampled to pieces if he tries it. Cow Patty, you are brilliant. Oh boy. Well, we survived our first day of classes in hazing. So, next time around, we're going to have to uh, work on uh, besting this one. But for now, we're going to call it an episode here. As always, this is Rich Kale here on YouTube, Rich Gen X elsewhere. I invite you to subscribe to the channel. And check out all the other videos I have up. I'm working through the spellcasting series. But besides that, I'm working my way through the Indiana Jones franchise from LucasArts, currently on Indiana Jones and the Infernal Machine. Uh, working my way through uh, the Shantae series, currently doing the first game after I complete the third game. Uh, working my way through, uh, I do run through the game of Monstrum. I'm working my way through Deponia to complete Journey. I'm working my way through uh, the King's Quest series from Sierra. I'll be starring the Princeless Bride. I'm working my way through the Tomb Raider. No, that, uh, that's a little bit later, but I'm working my way through the Doom franchise following Doom Guy slash Doom Slayer currently on Doom 2016. I'm also working my way through. Uh, through uh, Beyond Good and Evil and a bunch of others that premiere at 3 p.m. Eastern every day in a two-week cycle. Also, every week at 10 a.m., I have videos that normally premiere Tuesday through Saturday at 10 a.m. Tuesday is usually a fic reading. Wednesday is one of the first seven Final Fantasy games. Thursday is... Thursday is usually a Dead by Daylight video. Friday is one of the... One of the fighting games ladder modes right now, or tower modes, or however they want to call it. And Saturday is usually for a retrospective for a game or series I've beaten the story mode of. So, until next time, again, this is Rich Kill here on YouTube, Rich Gen X Elsewhere. We're going to save the game, and I will see you next time. Bye, all!